recording. Greetings. Stay a while and listen. It's I. There's multiple. Oh my God! This is. There have been upgrades. There. Uh, yes. Many many upgrades have been made. Uh, so we're jumping on a bandwagon. Actually, I don't know if this will be the first video or if the other is going to be. I don't. I don't know how we're going to do this. We've recorded some other content along these lines, but we're doing pack game card opening unboxing i don't know what the proper terminology is for it all, that all the cool kids are doing but uh we're doing that you know just a year late <laughs> in, in the pandemic it, it, it's fine it's fine and we're also not doing the cool games that the kids are doing like Yu Gi Oh, pokemon magic we're doing old stuff the stuff that you know basically we played yeah you know um uh so we, uh, we, we, we bought a bunch of stuff. Uh, what are we unboxing today, Helix? We've got for Legends of the Five Rings, or Le Legend of the Five Rings. Legend? Le I, it's Legend. Legend? Yeah. Legend, it's Legends of the Hidden Temple. Legend of the Five Rings. We've got two starter decks from the Emperor Edition Gimpuku set. Um, Can't see my hand. I'm trying to give a thumbs up. <laughs> For the dragon and the mantis. Yeah, we were talking about this on a live stream, talking about uh, what... So, uh, Legend Five Rings, shortened to L5R, uh, it's a feudal Japan, clan-based CCG. There's, you know, multiple win conditions. There's yeah. multiple mechanics that each clan kind of focuses on. And we started looking through it and trying to figure out what clans would be what play style would be interesting for us yeah while well, uh, also you know showing off a good amount of the game yeah uh and so we, we kind of leaned toward dragon and mantis i i think dragon was mine and you were leaning yeah. toward mantis we, we might end up reversing that because i feel like mantis is going to be much simpler because both of these clans have the ability to just like kill other people on the board mantis is just point at that person and they die Dragon is like point at that person. You do some duels and some other shit, and then <laughs> and they then die. The <laughs> so, so Mantis might be the better one for you to go with, considering I I played L five R for years and you never really got into it. Yeah, I I we we had a, a mutual friend at the the card store that I met Kulix at actually. That's where I met you of all places, uh, and he tried teaching me L five R, but his vast wealth of knowledge just kind of it was like you know how you try to open a dam and you try to open it a little bit and the whole thing just comes that was that was that learning experience just yeah. everything was thrown at me at one and i'm just like yeah l5r was notoriously difficult to get into because it has just like so many mechanics that's two decks that you use um like there's just so much going on with it yeah, it is. It is. Um, but for its credit, it was like the fourth biggest TCG at the time, like behind yeah. Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Pokemon. Yeah, it it did it did climb up there. Yeah, because it's it's you think about oh it's it's the fourth highest behind those three. It's like it is really difficult to break into the the yeah the like, card game market. It is very difficult to have a successful card game that gets you know, a following. And L5R had a following. Yeah. So, like, it may not have been as big, but just because of the nature of the game, like, the people that did pick it up got really into it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, I guess, since I did originally go with Dragon, I'll, I'll stick with the unboxing of Dragon, uh, if you want to do the unboxing of Mantis. And then yeah. if, if it comes down to it and we the play style ends up changing, we can change. Uh, do you want to open the Mantis first? Sure. Uh, do we have scissors? Um... No, of course we don't. Of course, of course, I didn't actually get any of the preparatory equipment. I'm just like, let me, let me get all these janky ass cameras. Up. Okay. Oh, oh. I, I do like these boxes. Yeah, the boxes are are awesome. Like, that's actually one thing I wish other games did was uh, convenient carrying. Because like I've had to buy a couple of carrying cases to. Replace some of my old stuff. It's a little story insert here. The Along with massive story. <laughs> more story and the actually kind of large rule book. 
Jesus, that's a book? Oh yeah, that that's a that's a book. Yeah. Like properly and, bound and everything. <laughs> like the the story was a huge part of L5R. Like Magic had a story, but like anecdotally, I didn't know anybody that really cared about it. L5R, pretty much everybody that played <coughs> played L5R had to have some was invested in the story. Yeah. Like they they released um fictions on their website every Friday and like everyone would read those. Which I think part of that is due down to the design of the games. Like um so we've got Jeez. A huge four, collection of cards, packs. which we'll go over here in a second. And two packs for uh Emperor Edition Gimbuku. We'll open those in a second. But yeah, just because of like the uh, design of the games, like in Magic, you use, you know, Llanowar Elf and Birds of Paradise. You don't really get attached to them. Yeah. In L5R... You use people. <laughs> all the cards are named. Yeah. It's like, these are people or creatures or, you know, things that have a history. Like, like in, in Magic, you've got, like, Urza's Saga and things like that. But, like, again, people... I, I could not tell you... I, I played a lot of Magic. I could not tell you damn thing about the story. Which way are they facing in my end? They're, uh, so, so, yeah. Okay. This is... So, Emperor Edition Gimpuku is kind of a collection set. Um, it didn't, well, it introduced some new cards in the Star Decks, but for the most part, it's just a anthology of the past five sets of Emperor Edition. You had Seeds of Decay and, um, the second city that came out before Emperor Edition, but were Emperor Legal. Then you had Emperor Edition itself, along with um, Seeds of Decay and uh, Embers of something. I, I, I'm about to say, you have more knowledge of this than I do, so. Well. And the Gimpuku starters just have a collection of basically all of the commons and uncommons and fixed cards that you would want for your clan in the starter decks. I'm gonna help with the packaging on these since I did not think to bring a... So here in this first one we've got the strongholds for the clan. Which do these have markings that tell us what set they are? It doesn't look like it. We've got Kailani's Landing, Koshin Keep, Hyuden Kitsune, Suitingu's Torch, and Aramasu's Legacy. Which these four, I think, were available from Emperor Edition, and this is from Seeds of Decay. Okay. And then we also have Imperial Favor, which this is, I think, not actually a card, but it's like a, it's a, it's a placeholder kind of thing. Ah. And then, you know, you get into the actual cards. So, like, you have a playset of Dragon's Favor, a playset of these. Yeah, so these boxes were designed to basically just get you into the game. It, it had everything from, what, two sets, you said? Five to, sets. Five sets. To just jump into the game and be able to play. Um, it's mostly commons and uncommons, so you don't have a lot of the, the, the rare. But, like, it's enough... To just throw you into it. Um, so with like two. these these two things, we could effectively make very viable decks. In fact, I think on the reverse side of this is a deck list. Oh. Yes. Oh, wow. Here, yeah, so. Me... so this is... So you could you know, experiment and make something of your own, but they also have this suggestion of, you know, put these cards together. Yeah. This is, this was the, basically their starter deck for, but like you have so much in this that you can be like, mm, let me, let me play around with it a little bit. So yeah, that's, that's neat. I, so Again, I never got into L5R, but I am already very, very impressed with this. <laughs> like, just this... Oshimadoka. 
oh, right. I was like, wait, isn't this supposed to be the special person? But um, it's the experienced version, which is not right next to her. Dang. Sabuchi. We'll go over the, the card arts more um, in our next video where we're opening more booster packs. Yeah. But for now, I mostly just want to get to uh, the cards that were added specifically to this deck. Yeah, the thing with it, these are like these sets are set. Like if you buy this uh, Emperor Edition Gumpuku uh, Dragon set, it will be the same as any other Dragon set. There's no variety between them. So like we're not doing a an actual like unpacking of these, but this is more a showcase of these these decks uh, or these deck construction yeah. components. Like this one. Um isn't unique to the set, but it was a fixed card in a previous set. So that's kind of neat. And I also did not get a trash box. Oh, hey, you've got one. Because, you know, every every YouTuber who does this has to have a trash box. <laughs> Probably there in this one, if I had to guess. Okay, so yeah, like here we have the Tsuruchi House Guard, Celestial Sword of the Mantis, Yoritoma Hiromi, the, the Mantis Champion. Okay, here we go. Moshi Madoka. This is a new card for the Gimpuku starters. Okay. So like earlier we had the regular Madoka. This is Madoka Experienced. Okay. So it's like the higher level version. And then we have uh, the other new card, Buried Treasures. Which... Every clan got a holding like this that's like, if you are this clan and you have four cards or less, yeah, four cards or less in your hand, you can bow at the draw card. Which bow is L5R terminology for tap. Yeah. Because magic has a trademark on tapping and like actually like moving a card to show that, you know, it's... Yeah, in which I, I don't know if like... AEG had to pay like royalties or that or like they just kind of picked it up when Wizards bought L5R and then they kept it when they bought L5R back from Wizards. It's yeah, it's hard to say. Um because this this property had had changed hands. So That's a goddamn bear wizard. <laughs> that is a goddamn bear wizard. Let me get it closer. That yeah. That is a that is a bear wizard, you know. Kitsune, just straight up a wolf that you know. <laughs> you know, I mean, I want to be friends with a wolf, ma'am. Anyway, there's one more pack, but that's basically you know the gist of the starter. Now, do you want to do? Your starter, or should we do the two packs first? Uh, go ahead and do the two packs. Because these aren't related to... Like, those two packs are not specifically Mantis. Themed. No. They're just general yeah. packs. So, yeah, let's so go ahead and do the, those. The starter decks were, you know, full of commons and uncommons from the past sets. These are six-card boosters that are all rares from the, the same five sets. So that you get Ember some rares. <laughs> Embers of War was the other set I just remembered. This is sealed rather tightly. And in fact, I've somehow managed to separate, you know, the lining from the inside. <laughs> like, there's... <laughs> Culix, the master at opening packs in the fourth dimension. <laughs> Oh, that's... I'm just going to bend them slightly. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, th th these cards are from the Emperor block, which was the second to last set, or the second last block before the Ivory block. Um, and then the game got bought by Fantasy Flight Games and turned into an LCG. And that lasted until, I think, like 2019 or 2020 before it got discontinued. Yeah, Fantasy Flight... I like Fantasy Flight games 
Um, but they don't hold on to games for a super long time. I mean, again, understandable. It's a difficult market. So. Oh, we got a Mantis. Unme. Oh. He's... That seems pretty cool. And another Mantis. Wow. Yori Tomasin. Very cool. And the next hope is to try to actually showcase playing some of these games. We've been we've been working on on that, and I'm we're still getting that. In the, but that's that's a plan. That's something we, we want to do. Yeah. And of course, to that end, you know, if I end up opening a dragon, it's not like oh well, this was part of the Mantis deck, so obviously you can't play it. Yeah. Now, if, you know, if I open up a dragon, or if Chris opens up a phoenix, or a mantis. I think you used to run phoenix. <laughs> uh, a little bit. I mean, my two main factions were mantis and unicorn. But I didn't want to use unicorn for one of the decks, because unicorns are all cavalry. And cavalry is its own bullshit. <laughs> I love when a game has so many mechanics, you're like, this is just, it's its own bullshit. It's just... Moneylender. Fa Ooh, Fain Death. That's a very good card. Asako Ritake. And Destructive Priorities. All right. Well, got a couple of good cards out of it. Yeah. So, I've been opening up Again, since these are all basically, you know, pre-packaged, I did get it. So we have the, the, the Dragon Clan locales and the Imperial Favor. And then I did want to showcase just this one card on top because a pure stroke. <laughs> and all I can think of is a guy just having a, having a seizure. Um, like, I oh, have... I was <laughs> I was going for the other kind of stroke. <laughs> One of the few times I was not the dirty mind. Oh, oh, I love it. This is what I love about card games. It's just it's just so easy to get into the, the fun of it all. Yeah. Um, so I believe the action pack there would have your fixed parts. This, that one right on top. This one? Yeah. So let's pop this open and see what we've got. Which mine were, you know, nothing too special, but the uh, the, the dragon ones are pretty cool looking. All right, come on. Out. Also, the back of the cards, since we haven't yeah. really shown that. Which, due to, you know, a legal issue with the Olympic Committee, they had to change their design in 1999. Really? Yeah. I think it was 99. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, we got Pure Stroke, Blade of Perfection, Steel on Steel, Breath of Heavens, Obscured Pathways, Rhetoric, The Sincerity of the Dragon. Yeah, there's the Tori Oscar, the Celestial Sword. There's your champion, I believe. Yeah, that's the champion. Muramoto Shike. And then the unique card, Tugashi Kurime, and Tattoos and Trinkets. Which, you know, compare the art on your card versus the art on my card. Wow. Like, that's... Yeah. Like, I, I just like the art on the, uh, the the dragon ones a lot more. Did they, uh, did they pull a, um, a Magic the Gathering and have, like, different artists commission each card or did they have different artist commission like each clan so that uh, like each clan was kind of like artistically thematic and uh, no, the, the cards are all just like on a per artist basis so it's okay. not like all the mantis are drawn by uh yeah Ma that's mario the thing. that's the thing like it, it, like Trying to read the artist name on these is really yeah. difficult. Um, well, let me open the two packs then and see what we get. Um, 
especially when we get to uh, the other packs, you know, we'll see some very different, very pretty cards. I see what you mean. <laughs> I too. You know, if I were smart, I would have gone to get scissors. <laughs> It's, it's fine. We've only got one more pack, and then we can go get to scissors uh, for the box. All right. So, first pack, we have Learning. It's Learning. Another Mantis, Yoritomo Kanye. Sanctioned Duel. Disreputable Deal. Oh, and a dragon. A dragon. And I have to wonder if anyone's going to yell at me for pronouncing that guy's name as Kanye. <laughs> But, it, you know, it was there. I just had to go for it. Yeah, they did not make these packs easy to get into. It also could be age. All right, what else we got? Um, uh, Blighted region. Rumors travel. And no other mantis or dragon. So, yeah. But hey, we got some, you know, some cool stuff in there. Yeah. So uh, next video we do, we're going to open the loose packs that we've yep. got because we got a bunch of loose packs for this. So we will do be doing a more traditional opening of those. Like I said, these since they're all basically pretty much yeah, like they're they're nice looking cards, but yeah, it, it's all you know fixed. Yeah. Uh, but I I did want to show you because like I do. I do love these. Like, this is yeah. a, a very gorgeous and interesting game, and I'm super excited to try to get into it again. Um, yeah, and, like, the, the Game Puku Stars with just, like, all the stuff that they give you are, you know, a, really a pretty nice entry point. Even though, like, um, Emperor wasn't the newest set, like, if you wanted to get the last set, you'd get, you know, cards from the Ivory Edition or Ivory, Ivory Legal cards. Um and Emperor was, I've heard, a, like a little bit more susceptible to power creep. But mm. like with just what you get out of the game Puku Stars, it's hard to like argue against just using them as a starter point. Yeah. However, getting all this stuff back into the box is a tad bit more difficult. <laughs> it never wants to go into the box the same way. All right. So yeah, we will we'll end this episode here and we will be back with an actual unboxing with the the loose packs we got. We'll see what we've got and we'll set off the we'll set aside the the dragon and the manta stuff and then uh, at some point we will have once I, I try to learn the game <laughs> we will have, we'll hopefully have a gameplay video of this. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the next part. We'll be back in part two. Bye.